Hi, I'm Allison the Crocheter. And I'm Vivian the Knitter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Hello, and welcome to episode 55 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. This is a knitting and crocheting podcast hosted by me and my mom, Vivian. I'm recording from my home here in Edinburgh. And I'm recording from my home here in Virginia. Hello. Hi, everybody. I, I, um, <laughs> what? W- we read our intro section from our notes uh, every week, and uh-huh. I just have to say, every episode. sometimes I just or every every episode and in in my notes there's the reminders in parentheses thanks to new slash old subscribers slash listeners etc so <laughs> thanks to new slash old subscribers slash listeners etc et everything <laughs> thanks for joining us <laughs> oh. uh, uh, anyway we had a new um hello so thank you to i am the dishwasher who is michelle and she binged us backwards in reverse order in reverse of episodes order. yeah <laughs> Uh-huh. And she's definitely on Team Crochet. Hello, oh, Michelle. Thanks for saying hi. Yeah. I am not the dishwasher in my family. <laughs> Sam's the dishwasher. I am definitely the dishwasher in this yeah. family. I do not wash them sufficiently, apparently. No? I leave crud on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's because we just throw it in the dishwasher, yeah, usually. Well, not us. Uh, and we also had a new iTunes review. Mm-hmm. That was just left last Saturday, Dr. Goad, D-R-G-O-A-D, and thank you very much because those iTunes reviews help other people find us. Indeed. So if anyone else is feeling inspired to leave us an iTunes review, you know, we would be inspired. Yes, and we'd appreciate it. So yeah, so thanks everyone for saying hello and leaving us reviews and all of that good stuff. I struggled to find a BuzzFeed quiz this week, but you found one that is... On theme, because... Did you not see that? It was, like, on their front page. I did see it, um, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't really... I don't know. But it is Thanksgiving-themed, because Thanksgiving is... N- next week? Next week. Um, although I have already had my Thanksgiving dinner. Your Friendsgiving dinner. My Friendsgiving dinner. Very early. Yeah, uh, it's early. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it is... Are you naughty or nice based on the Thanksgiving foods you choose? So it's kind of like a Thanksgiving slash... Christmas quiz? Yeah, it's like sort of. Thanksgiving is going to tell you whether or not you're naughty or nice for Christmas. Yeah. So 50-50 that we've got the same answer. And I think we might have ha- might have the same answer. I got naughty list. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Says, wow, you've been pretty naughty this year, haven't you? This year you'll, you'll receive nothing but a lump of coal. Bah humbug. Right. Okay. So... <laughs> I think we should take some guesses at which foods we think are naughty and which one are nice as well. Um, but yeah, so the first the first question, cornbread or dinner rolls? Cornbread is definitely naughty. That's what I picked. Yeah, that's what I picked as well. Even though we wouldn't have either at Thanksgiving. No, not at our Thanksgiving. No. and But cornbread is definitely not something that you see very much here in this country. Mm. All right. Stuffing or roast vegetables? You must have said stuffing. You probably picked roast vegetables because you don't like stuffing. No, I went for stuffing. Really? Mm-hmm. You just I'm, don't I'm like my around. stuffing. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You do. Oh, okay, so you do the cranberries in the stuffing, right? Yeah. And I do like that, but the last couple of years we've made gluten-free stuffing because we've had a friend who's gluten-free. Uh-huh. This year we made the same recipe, but with with regular uh-huh. gluten, <laughs> bread full of gluten, um, <laughs> and it was still good. Uh huh. But it had no nothing like to to make it fancy like there were no nuts no bits of fruit uh-huh. it was just leeks and celery and bread and a lot of herbs fresh herbs onion no just well, the leeks just the leeks okay i mean i just buy the pepperidge farm bag that's pre-seasoned <laughs> <laughs> um right and then scalloped potatoes or mashed potatoes well, i would think the scalloped potatoes are the naughty but they they're both pretty naughty Hmm. See, I, I, I just what, what, what does scalloped potatoes, potatoes mean? It's you know sliced really thin, smothered in cheese and stuff, and then baked. Yeah, that seems naughty, but at the same time, it seems fancier. <laughs> That's so maybe true. it's nice. <laughs> I don't know, but mashed okay. potato, our mashed potatoes are kind of naughty. I mean, with the butter and then I put the cream cheese in it, it's pretty naughty. Oh, cream cheese. I'm, I'm, I've, I've made Sam. I say Sam because he does most cooking as well as the dishwashing. <laughs> um, put cream cheese in the in the mashed potatoes, but the first like time we did, yeah, I think it could have 
we, we could put more butter mm-hmm. in potatoes this year. But the first year we did Thanksgiving dinner and I was li- like listing all the dishes that we had to make. And I said mashed potatoes. And he, and he said, oh, can we just do roast potatoes? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and he was really annoyed because he's like, mashed potatoes suck. And I kind of, not that I agree with him, but ma- roast potatoes are really good. But I was like, if it's, th- it's Thanksgiving, it has to be mashed potatoes. Like, we can't have roast potatoes. That's funny. Um, and then today, not today, this year, we were at the at Thanksgiving dinner. He speculated that maybe the best type of mashed or ma- potato would be if you could do a roast potato and then somehow scoop out the inside so you have, like, the nice crispy <laughs> outside and then just fill it with mashed potato. <laughs> and well, then you, have the, the the you can both. have mashed potatoes and then you put stuff on it and then you bake it and then it has a crispy top. Mm, but but the, the the roast potatoes are so crispy because they've been baked in like goose fat or something. Oh, okay. So it's just a it's a different kind of crispy. Anyway, okay. Green bean casserole or sweet potato casserole? Sweet potato is definitely the naughty, but I didn't pick it because I don't really like marshmallows with my sweet potatoes. Yeah, I went for green bean casserole as well. But I, you don't have to make put marshmallows on a sweet potato casserole. That's true, but the picture has marshmallows on it. <laughs> yes, yeah. And it is the one thing that, like, when you talked about Thanksgiving dinners with British people, uh-huh. they always ask, like, do you do the thing with the marshmallows and the sweet potato? I'm like, no, I don't personally. <laughs> but <laughs> It's def- definitely more prevalent here in the South. Um, rice pilaf or macaroni and cheese? Mac and cheese. I went for rice. Really? Yeah. Huh. But the mac and cheese is definitely the naughty. Yeah. Well, so far, so far, the only thing that I picked that wasn't naughty is the green bean. Maybe me too. No, you picked the rice pilaf. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the rice. Okay. Uh, And the roast beef for fried chicken. This didn't fit. This I I don't. A side dish for your Thanksgiving? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I I picked fried chicken. I like fried yeah, me too. Chicken better than roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't actually look like roast beef. That looks like a stew or something, or like pulled pork. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, I think fried chicken is the naughty one. Ham or turkey? And then turkey. Me too. You have to have turkey for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Also, which one's the naughty one? Yeah, it must be ham because turkey's like the <laughs> original Thanksgiving thing. Uh, cranberry sauce or gravy? Gravy. Gravy. Yeah. I want for gravy, but if you're having a leftover Thanksgiving sandwich, then I want, then I want cranberry sauce on it. That's but I don't only, tend to eat. That's kind of funny because you know you don't use the cranberry sauce unless it's a leftover sandwich. Yeah. Like we have it and other people were, were using the cranberry sauce, but I didn't put any cranberry sauce on my dinner plate. Only on my sandwich after that's the next funny. day. Oh, I, <laughs> I love a Thanksgiving feast sandwich where you have all the stuff on it and on bread and it's portable. Yeah. Uh, and then cranberry juice or apple cider? Apple cider. Because uh, yeah, this looks like it's spiced, mold and spiced apple cider. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it wasn't, that's why I would pick. Mm, yeah. Uh, and then, Can you get good uh, apple cider out there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. And like mold cider is mold. Like apple juice? Like al- no, alcoholic cider. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's just... And for anyone who's wondering, any non-Americans or non Northeasterners, non yeah, I, d- I don't know Coast. where exactly in, in in America you get apple proper apple cider. It it should be dark in color because it's been partially fermented. Mm-hmm. Is that is that why it's dark? Yeah, pressed and fermented. Mm. That's a so for a it while. is not apple juice. It's not, it's brown not the same apple thing. Juice. No, yeah, there you I can buy brown apple juice, but it's not the mm. same. That's what they yeah. used to sell in California. I was so excited. As apple cider. Yeah, it's like apple cider, and it was brown. And I drank it. It's like this is not apple cider. This is brown apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> I was very um, disappointed. Right, and then for dessert, pumpkin pie or pecan pie? You pick pink pumpkin. Yeah, I pick pecan. Mm. See, Sam prefers the pecan pie as well. We do, but we did both. Mm-hmm. But I think the pecan pie is too sweet for me. Oh, uh, because it is very sweet. It is very sweet. So that, you know, when I was saying, I, I like both, but that one appealed to me when I was taking the quiz. So mm-hmm. I think pecan pie is definitely the naughty one. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I got on the naughty list. <laughs> yeah, you picked like basically all the naughty things. All the naughty things. Although I'm not sh- oh yeah, I, I, I think apple cider is naughty and cranberry juice is nice. Mm-hmm. Why? Maybe. Why? Yeah, why? I don't know, because like, isn't cranberry juice supposed to be good for like... Your UT, yeah, urinary tract. <laughs> yeah. So we have a so UTI. That, that, that's supposed- why it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we just talked 10 minutes about different Thanksgiving treats. Yeah, I'm um, excited about Thanksgiving. Number one, 
I don't have to cook a thing because, you know, we're not going to, we're going to Boston. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, you enjoy that. I will. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Right. Crafty content. Whips. You got any whips? I do. Do you? Yes. Okay. Well, who's going to start? I'll start. Okay. <laughs> I started a new whip. It's called the Pop Blanket by Tin Can Knits, and it's the same designer as the Lush Sweater. I was I saw this blanket at the yarn store in Maine. Mm-hmm. What's it called again? Something with pearls. Pearl something. Pearl. I've already forgotten the I name of the place. Know. I don't remember. <laughs> the one with the... <laughs> the mermaid. The mermaid. Yeah. And um, I've seen this blanket before. But mostly, it's it's basically, it's it's knit in, in squares, and then each square mm-hmm. there's a, a circle in it, like a big dot. And mm-hmm. the, most of the ones I've seen are a white background and the dots, and they're supposed to look like comics. Like, that was the inspiration for the designer, like comic books. Okay. But I saw one with dark Malabrigo as the outside, like a dark blue, and then the inside was different ombre yarns in, in jewel tones. I was like, oh my god, that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm not going to buy Malabrigo to do a blanket, because that would just be too expensive for me. I saw this blue yarn at Target, of all places, and it's a cotton blend. It's Lion, ba- Lion Brand Comfy Cotton Blend. 50% mm-hmm. cotton, 50% polyester, and I was like, oh, a cotton poly would be good for a blanket. I wouldn't, I didn't, you know, I wouldn't want to use acrylic, but anyway, so I bought the blue and then I ordered four different colors for the, for the pops mm-hmm. and I started knitting it and I, I knit a whole bunch, a whole bunch of, this is, um, started in the center mm-hmm. and it's, um, pinhole cast on, which I've never done before. And it sounds mm-hmm. kind of like that th- something you were saying about a magic circle or something like that in crochet. Yeah. Uh huh. So, and I actually had to use a crochet hook to do it. So this oh. these squares are kind of small. So I follow mm. the pattern. I'm like, and I made about four of these squares. I'm like, God damn it, it's gonna just take too long to to make a blanket out of these small squares. So I redid the math. Uh-huh. So I'm making them bigger. <laughs> so this oh, is, right. this is the the uh, the the first one, the first square. How many different colors for the inside have you gotten? I you have four different ones. There's like a blue, blue green, and a so they're like purple. Purpley pink and a, mm-hmm. and a, I don't know, they're just like different jewel what, tones. What, what, what's that called? Where you've got like the different. It's marled. Right, yeah, because you've got the two different it's colors. It's like different, different, co- bif- different strands. Yeah, twisted together. And so they're all. Why you make. What? You never make blankets. Yeah. And now suddenly this is your second one in a row. It's the second Nearly. one in a row? Well, you did the baby, oh, the baby blanket, blanket, the chevron. Well, I was looking at my couch and it looked kind of naked. I thought it would look. <laughs> uh-huh. I thought my couch would would uh, look prettier with a pretty blanket on it, and also at at the knitting group that I've been going going to, a bunch of the ladies have been working on weather blankets. Oh yeah, where you or take... you do like a different color for what temperature it was that day. Yeah, or, or yeah, the like sky the high high and the lows. Like they pick a different uh-huh. color different color for each like ten ten degree increment, mm-hmm. and then. And then those are the two colors that they knit for the for the day. So the day. if you do a uh-huh. whole year, you have 365 blocks, right? So anyway, uh-huh. they, and I was just looking at their gorgeous blankets, like, oh, it kind of inspired me to do something like that. Like something long-term and not necessarily I can just, you know, throw it together um, yeah. in, in, in a couple of days. So I, I've been working on only when I'm home, like in, in, in sitting in bed watching TV. So mm-hmm. eh, it might take me a year, but I'm not like doing any temperature thing. It's just yeah, yeah, just the colors that I liked. So that's that. And my second whip is my East Coast girl. I've I've been working on that again. Wait, 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 wait. go back, back, go back, go back, go back, go back to where you were. The pinhole cast on. Mm-hmm. You said you had to do it with a crochet hook. Mm-hmm. Can you explain that? So basically, I have had to make a loop. Mm-hmm. But it's not knotted or anything. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then I put the hook through the loop and pulled out the working yarn. Yeah. And then over the loop and pulled out, did a yarn over, and then pull it through that first loop. Uh-huh. And that was one stitch. And I did it again. So I was basically so you, doing you like built a up. slip stitch for each. But you built them up 
on on the crochet hook. Yes, so I left it on the crochet hook. So they were gotcha. all okay. all around this the 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 loop. Yeah. The twisted. And okay. then I was able and then the knot the tail I can pull yeah. Pull yeah. Tight. Okay. So magic ring you would just do that but stitches into the circle. Yeah. So instead of so I'll ha- um but but every time I did a slip stitch I would leave it on instead of Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like, like when I was doing it, it's like, Oh, it sounds something like what Allison was talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So I use my crochet hook, so there's a little bit of crocheting in there. Haha. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my second whip is my East Coast Girl Cardigan by Vera Valamarki. And I had to put this aside because I was working on some, you know, the other stuff. And I am on the... Remind me what this looks like. It looks like a lace yoke. Uh-huh. And then the, the body is pretty much just stocking it. Mm-hmm. And it's a, oh, it's a cardigan. Yeah, yeah and it's okay. a cardigan. And I've I've divided for the sleeves. I've done about three mm-hmm. three rows of the body, and it's like doesn't really look like much right now because it's all mm-hmm. like crowded on on my needle. Mm-hmm. But I think it looks. So does that fancy. mean if you've divided for the sleeve, does that mean you're done with the lace? Yes, I am done with the lace. So right now it's just stocking it until you until you go with the waist decreases. And I'm wondering, mm-hmm. I was wondering. Maybe I should just skip the waist and just like knit straight down, mm-hmm. because you know my waist doesn't actually go in. <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like at the moment I'm liking things that are a bit more bo- boxy, yeah, and loose. Uh huh. I've been eating a lot of pie oh. and cake and cookies. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah, so um, this is this yarn is is the yarn that I got. At Edinburgh this year, earlier this year, the mm-hmm. Biche Bouche, mm-hmm. and I'm very happy with it. Especially since I don't have to. I do the spit splice for the uh, the joining a new skein rather than mm-hmm. having because it's you know it's not swash. Uh huh. Very happy. How how far do you like? How much do you make it overlap to do that? Maybe three inches, two inches. And like, is that like are you like pretty confident? That's like. N- not gonna come undone like ever well this yarn felt very easily so yeah yeah cool so i'm and plus you know you're knitting like even if it didn't felt complicated stitches and you know you're knitting it um like two strands at a time so why would it come out two strands at a time yeah like that's when you're the part that you're trying to felt together if it didn't felt it'd be two strands right yeah, yeah, I yeah, no, I don't know what I'm saying. But this, yeah, this it's it's very sticky yarn, so it would it 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 sticks onto itself very very easily. Uh, so I don't I don't I don't see that there would be a problem with that. So I just started the second skein. I can't remember how many I bought. So hopefully I have and I'll have to look at at the yardage again enough for uh-huh. if I don't do the the waist decrease. Sure, the waist decreases aren't that extreme that no. it would make that much of a difference. No, I'd, it probably wouldn't make that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, because my waist does not decrease. <laughs> it actually increases. <laughs> so, um. so that's what I've been working on. Um, yeah, just those are two main things I work on. I think maybe, yeah, I haven't been working on anything else other than that. What have you mm-hmm. been working on? So, so whips wise, I'm doing a working on a very weather appropriate cotton tank top. Uh huh, and you don't even have it in our notes. Why don't you have it in our notes? Because I didn't know if I was gonna talk about it. Um, it's a a thing of my own design. Um, I'm using the leftover yarn from my puffin pillowcase. Huh? So it's the um the drop the... saffron. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, so eh, who knows if I'll have enough yarn for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of it's left over from the baby blanket as well uh-huh. that I made. Um, and isn't that I, worth so it? Wait, no, it's four ply uh, fingering. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is why that baby blanket took me forever because I was like, <laughs> "This yard's so small." <laughs> uh, and the puffin pillow. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, that makes more sense. I guess. <laughs> uh, so I took a tank top that I have, which is like quite. Uh, like thicker straps and a bit loose fitting. It's I don't know if you remember. It's it's the green one that was from a sorority formal, and in, on the back it says "drinks well with others." <laughs> um, it's a very comfy tank top. So I, I have like a roll of white paper. So I uh-huh. I've 
I traced it to create a, a, not a pattern, but just so I can, a template, yeah. So I can lay my work on top of it to kind of eyeball how to do the increases Mm -hmm. because I'm doing it sideways. Oh. So So I'm going to make it, I'm going to, up and down. Yeah. So from the top, the bottom hem up to the top and then back. Uh, And it will join at the back Mm -hmm. and I've put buttonholes. So yeah. it will button down the back, so I don't have to. So it'll button on the back, and so it's gonna crisscross I... to the back. No, so it's so it's like like you know if you if you had a shirt that buttoned up the front like that, but it's gonna button up the back. But it's gonna be in the back. Oh, okay. So not crisscross. What? what? You know how some of those tank tops they crisscross in the back, and it's almost like a an apron. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So it will close. So it buttons all the way down the back. Okay. Um. So I started on the buttonhole side. So I, I, I left, did some chain spaces to leave enough space for a button. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm alternating between front and back loop and single crochet and half double crochet to create like a sort of texture of my stitches. Oh, that's cool. Uh, so, and then because I'm doing it sideways. You have vertical stripes. It's creating, yeah, it's creating and a line vertically stripes. and then i'm doing yeah then i'm doing actual color stripes vertically as well right, so is it going to so, be like uh, is that stripe going to be offset because it's, it's not really striped you have a couple stripes that looks like you have like color blocks oh uh, it's because th- there's it's because there's really dark colors that you might not be able to see oh i see there's like there's like two different types of navies that are quite close on a black a white and then like the denim blue ultimately i want to do it in like more of a rainbow color but i figure i test it with the yarn that I have uh-huh. and if I can get something that works I'll buy the rainbow colors that I want and do it again um, and then the straps I was thinking just doing the straps so you do them like extra long uh-huh. so you do the full length of the strap and then sew it to the back uh-huh. where it's supposed to go but instead to go with a no sew I'm doing buttonholes in it so I've made them longer than what they need to be there's three holes so then there'll be a button on the back that you can connect it to Huh. In theory. So th- there'll be like loose little flaps of strap oh. below the button. I'd be afraid that it would it would like undo. Undo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Or we could just um, like tack it down. It, yeah, say it could be for show potentially. Yeah. But but also if it if I decide it doesn't work then for the real ver the you know, the rainbow version I could do something different. But because the stripes won't match. Uh-huh. Because whatever color the strap will be, once you fold it into the back, it won't be the same color as the back. Most likely. Yeah. As whatever stripe it is in the back. I mean, I guess you could try and plan it so it is, but I haven't thought that far ahead about it. I've already spent so long trying to figure out about the lean. I talked about this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This this was, this was the project that I was doing where, where, because I was alternating single crochets and half double crochets, it was like yeah, a, a parallelogram. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so, so, but I couldn't just do, or I didn't want to just do single, single, half double, half double, single, single, half double, half double, because of the the way it created the pattern, like the the look of it, like, and then the color changes. But anyway, so that that's my whip, which, knowing me, you know, it's like it could just never get finished. It could be a disaster. <laughs> It looks really good. I'm I'm impressed. But yeah, yeah. I'm I'm hoping. Are you gonna use the orange too? No, I, I used all the orange in the baby blanket. Oh, okay. So it's all na- bl- blues, blues and, and white and black. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, nice. So that's uh-huh. that's the only thing you're. Um, pretty much. I I because I finished my other project. Uh-huh. Um, and I was trying to think of a project to start, and I thought oh, I've just done a sweater. I'll do something a bit smaller like a, sh- a scarf or a shawl or something. And then all of the ones that I have in my uh, queue are Tunisian crochet. Mm-hmm. And not that I don't want to do tun- Tunisian crochet, but I've, I've just finished this one that was Tunisian. And there's actually quite a lot of Tunisian projects in my queue. So mm-hmm. I'll probably just have to pick one, but I haven't picked which one I want to do mm-hmm. yet. And work up the effort to take up the yarn. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that requires so much... Uh... Effort. Yeah, you gotta like take out the thing and do the thing and touch the other thing and then yeah, lots of effort, lots of things. Yeah. Okay, I know you have an FO. Yeah. Well, you do too. Yeah, but yeah, 
Okay, I'll go first. <laughs> so it's my Corbata sweater. Yay! Yay! It's done. Um, so it was pretty close to being done last time we spoke. Anyway, that looks great. Um, I'll take it from the top. Just, just, just as a recap, I used uh, Madeline Tosh dandelion, which is a discontinued single ply fingering yarn. In it's ninety percent merino and ten percent linen in like a denim blue. And I had four four skeins of it, and I used absolutely all of it. There's like a little ball left, and that 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 is all um because i was doing the sleeves like one at a time <laughs> in order to see how long i can make them so they're pretty much three quarter length uh so i, I wore I, <laughs> there are still four ends to even that i haven't done uh-huh. i've done all the other ones but i wanted to wear it on monday at work to work i don't know uh tuesday maybe um so i just wore it with that tuck weaving in the ends just kind of like tuck them in the, <laughs> in the inside and i, I wore a turtleneck under it uh-huh. so i had the turtleneck because obviously the the front goes quite low and my sleeves came out the bottom uh-huh. as well but i think it looked fine um but yeah i definitely if you're if you've done at least maybe a little bit of tunisian crochet i recommend the pattern it's got some knit, uh just crochet in it as well with the front overlapping panels and an interesting construction because of the way it crosses it over it yeah. itself yeah and i actually i sew i crocheted one of the flaps down mm-hmm. so my front flap is flappy mm-hmm. and then the inside flap i've actually t- turned it into not a flap so i've got a full full bottom hem essentially uh-huh. so it's kind of like a skirt for my <laughs> belly <laughs> skirt for your belly <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it looks it looks really great. Too bad yeah, that I'm, your I'm, lighting is awful. I'm having a hard time seeing it. But, yeah, sorry. But I saw pictures. It's of getting it dark here. It's four o'clock and the sun is down. <laughs> 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 um, but I'll I'll take photos and, and everything. And obviously, it'll be in the the show notes as well as the video version. And I'll get some of me modeling it. Uh-huh. Um, I'm I'm glad I took the time to redo the sleeves seventeen million times because. It, you know, it just fits nicer and it's more comfortable on my arms. Yeah, especially if you're going to wear something underneath it. You don't want it to be uh, too tight yeah. or anything. Yeah. yeah. But I could see myself wearing, like, I think there's one thing about living here is there's lots of opportunities to wear woolens. Uh-huh. Even in, the, like, the spring and the summer when it's maybe too hot in other places. You don't really have – I don't think you have to necessarily resort to, to cotton because it'll, you know, well – I never don't wear jeans in the summer, for one thing. Uh-huh. So I could imagine I could wear like in- even, like, a tank top made out. I don't know why you would, but <laughs> if it was, like, well, you know, like um, like sock yarn or something. Uh-huh. And I w- I'd still probably need an ounce, a top, a layer on top of that. Uh-huh. So with this, even though it's three-quarter sleeves, um, I could wear a cami under it uh-huh. and just wear that in, like, the spring. Yeah. yeah. And I'll be fine. Uh-huh. Probably still with a you know a jacket for traveling in between indoors. Yeah, well that's yeah that's you know where you live. I certainly couldn't do it here in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's I give that I'll give that a a big smiley face on Ravelry, <laughs> happiest happy face. Um, and well, you worked hard on that. It does look fabulous. Yeah, and I I will probably at some point be trying another one of. Uh, the di- designer's patterns, Rachel Henri. I, I realized I have had one of her scarf patterns in my favorites for ages mm-hmm. already before, like from before. So yeah, judging from the the sweater pattern, I think her other ones should be good as well. Very nice. She does pretty much, I think pretty much all Tunisian. Oh, so. really? Wow. Um, I have two FOs. Which one should I talk about first? Uh, the big one. Or uh, the small one? Do the small one first. Okay. So I I started and knit a hat in a couple of days because one of your friends, your roommate in London, um, requested that I remake something for her because she lost <laughs> the first one it. I gave her, and it is. But that's how much she loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called the Police Box Slouch Hat by. Sid Hanscom. It's basically a TARDIS hat. So, um, I made her a pink one. 
Did she request the pink one? No, she didn't. But I'm going to give her uh, Madeline's blue one, <laughs> too. So she's going to have two. Because <laughs> I think Madeline's worn she's this maybe, maybe twice. <laughs> Maybe uh-huh, three times. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. I already washed, rewashed it, and blocked it. So I will give her, give your friend, the blue one, and she's gonna uh-huh. get an extra one. So, so is, is, is it pink or is it? It's like it's a definitely pink. magenta, like a berry. Yeah, like kind of berry. Yeah. I was just thinking, like I could totally imagine her and her boyfriend each wearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they would totally do that. So um, this is a paid for pattern. And it's got like a a tubular. It's not a tubular cast on, but it's just uh, you you knit a tube in the bottom. It makes it nice and stretchy. Uh-huh. And then of uh-huh. course it's color work, and it has a square top with the the light on top. Light. Which mm-hmm. Looks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little naughty when you're knitting it. <laughs> a little phallic. <laughs> yeah, but it usually flops down when you're wearing it. Uh huh. So yeah, this is yeah. just—it's pretty cool pattern because it's because it's the square it's top, square, the square and, top. Yeah. yeah, and it's a slouchy hat. It's really cute. Um, in fact, yeah. um, it's got the windows and it says police box on it. Police box. It's really so. This is the one, two, third, third one I've made. Uh huh. Of this pattern. Yeah. I think, did she lose it in Australia? She lost it in Australia, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure she doesn't listen to us, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think she does either. So, um, um, But she requested it, so she knows it's coming. She knows. Just not just not the, the, just not the, the, second, the one. second one. Yeah. And and the other one um, was actually re-gifted. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Better than nothing. Uh-huh. So that was a fun little uh, quick knit. And my big FO is... M- my bubbly brioche yay it's yay. so big <laughs> oh my goodness i don't know if i'm ever gonna it be able to wear it here really cozy it is i think i'm gonna use it more as like a a, a blanket than anything else like a lap blanket yeah <laughs> but it goes narrow at the end it does but what am i gonna wear it here i mean even I though know. this is only f- it's fingering weight but the brioche makes it really thick and Chunky. Uh-huh. and um cozy mm-hmm. so maybe i'll take it with me to boston um when I mean, you can certainly take it with you here for christmas that's true it's cold yeah i know you just moved but i think you need to move back somewhere colder <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's so nice it's so squishy and i love the way the colors play with each other yeah i really like your colors i mean it's very similar to the colors that jen had originally mm. and I, I i am missing like maybe one or two bubbles but you know you can't really tell <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you have to look really hard to find the missing bubbles uh but uh-huh. i was able to fudge it like ah oh, screw it i'm just i'm not gonna rip back anymore i'm just gonna yeah that's okay it makes it unique <laughs> pretend those bubbles don't exist <laughs> So yeah, very nice. That was fun and frustrating at the same time. But I really got the hang of doing brioche. That mm-hmm. I can't remember if I mentioned it. I was able to help somebody else with their brioche. Ooh, yeah. at like in person or with this particular? No, in person. Product. There's there's uh, a bunch of ladies that were doing that are still doing the Stephen West mystery knit along, and it's got a bit of brioche mm-hmm. in it. And one of the mm-hmm. ladies screwed something up, and I was able to uh, fix it for her. Mm-hmm. You're an expert now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, you know, drop drop the stitches down and then pick it back up the right, correct way. Hmm, Learn something new. So I have two new skills that I've learned. One is the brioche, and the mm-hmm. other one was the pinhole cast on How, or ha- magic, the magic circle, magic ring. It's a cast on. Um, well, because like. Like, what What other uses would you have that for, other than, like, knitted toys or something? Hats? Mm. Top down. Maybe. Top down. Maybe. Um, mm. I don't know. <laughs> Placemats? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't really know, because this is the first time I've used it. Mm-hmm. That's a cool little technique. And that is all the knitting I have for the last couple of weeks. It's pretty good. Yeah, I think I did pretty well. So I was hoping to have a bit to talk about for chapter two of this golden fleece, but I haven't finished it. So. Oh, 
you know I'll what? just tease I think, that for. I think we should tease our, our next uh, um, cow cow or K cow. Yes, I think so too, which reminds me that I was supposed to speak to you before this about what we wanted to call it, and I didn't. Uh... <laughs> we need to have like planning meetings. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Well, it was your idea, so will I let you? Yeah, so so one of the the knitting friends was working on a shawl, and it was a really cute pattern that she had dug up from one of her really really old Vogue knitting magazines, and I just and it just made me go, you know, we all we all collect these magazines, these books, or or, or we favorite these patterns, and some of them. You know, they stay in our favorites or they stay in our stash for so long that we forget about it. And then we, when we re, re-look at these patterns, like, oh, I forgot about, you know, the, I don't know, either, either it's, I would never knit that, you know, cause, because it's, you know, your skill set is different or your changes, your, your, your tastes, tastes have changed. Or you look at other ones and like, oh, yeah, I, should, I, I don't know why I never knitted it. So I suggest that we look at old patterns in our stash how old how old um well i think it'll be different for everybody because some people have not been crocheting or knitting for as long so we'll maybe leave that up to people at least or i don't know at least a couple years old i mean if, if you haven't been collecting collecting patterns for that long then you can look at patterns that are older not necessarily that's been in your library how's that is mm-hmm. that fair Yeah, I I think if we say, like, stuff that's older than two years, at least, but if you haven't, if you don't have stuff that's that's that old, or if you haven't been crafting for that long, then whatever is on the older end, the oldest that you find or think of. Yeah, so I I was looking at my um, library of magazines and things, and there's definitely things that I wouldn't knit anymore that I had favorited, or or things Mm -hmm. that completely bypassed me because you know my skill set just wasn't there at that point yet so um yeah I, I've, I've actually made some uh, like a new bundle of favorites whether or not I should I'll take a look at it again so what are we gonna call this well uh, I thought something about like the archive <laughs> <laughs> hey that's a that's a good idea good thing I'm really good at editing now <laughs> <laughs> Um, and do we want to call it a mal to incorporate both the k- k- crocheting and knitting? Um, or we can just, you know, a K-Cow. K-Cow? That's what we've been calling it. Uh-huh. So. Yeah. Really, we should be calling it a, a nook-cow because <laughs> it's knitting. <laughs> <laughs> the N is silent. Or, no, not, not silent. The N is is. Is is spoken. Just gone. Missing. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah, but if you're spelling the K it, pronounced no. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, um so the archive K cow? The archive K cow? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh and I would say yeah, so this is just us teasing it. So we'll get dates and stuff, but it'll probably start in the new year. Definitely, because so, nobody has time for anything now. We got time for that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that just gives you plenty of time, uh, to have a look through all your old patterns and stuff. So yes. Yeah. And I already have cool. a few ideas. Yeah. And and you know, extra points for if you if you go stash diving too. Yeah. Okay. Not actual extra points. We're not doing points. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough dealing with points with the K cow, the cow cow. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing points for other cows. <laughs> we didn't do a cow cow last year, did we? I know we didn't. <laughs> I think that was this year, but we'll do one this maybe year. next year. Anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I was going to bring up something for Nertastic, but maybe maybe I won't because I don't know if... His Dark Materials, is that airing in the US? I think so. Yeah. Is it on Amazon or is it on um, Netflix? I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll talk... Um, so... The the BBC is in the middle of doing his Dark Materials books by Philip Pullman uh-huh. as a oh, TV show. HBO. So I think the fourth episode was released this past weekend. So I've been watching that. Um, you've read the books, yeah? Yeah. Yes, I listened to all the books. I didn't mm. actually read. So um, oh, those yeah. are 
the golden compass, the subtle knife, and amber spyglass for anyone who maybe doesn't know. Oh, but I feel like I put this in my queue. Yeah, they, it's it's on HBO, and they they've uh, uh, the season four pro no the episode four promo was dropped two days ago. I don't know when. Okay, yeah. So so anyways, you should watch that because it's very good and it makes up for the movie because the movie <laughs> was made a while ago now and but, I think but it has probably Daniel the, Craig and Michelle Pfeiffer Michelle Pfeiffer in it pretty sure wasn't that Michelle Pfeiffer oh no no not Michelle Pfeiffer Nicole Kidman Gwyneth Paltrow oh no, Nicole Kidman, Kidman that's yeah. what it was it had Daniel yeah. Craig in it <laughs> <laughs> that blonde no that blonde no the other blonde um <laughs> sorry All these blondes get me confused <laughs> <laughs> James McAvoy is Lord Astriel oh okay um and uh, I can't think what her name is, but she's um she's the the psychopath from Luther. Oh, the one that that looks like the... she's smiling when she's crying. Um, yeah, maybe <laughs> <laughs> the really thin upper lip. Yeah, she 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 was um Ruth Wilson. Yes, Ruth Wilson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, she I, she did something when she was young, and there was a scene when she's crying, but her her lips turn up a little bit when she's crying. <laughs> so she's always forever going to be known as the girl that looks like she's crying when she's like, like she's so laughing when she's crying. And then like maybe that that's why she made a good psychopath <laughs> maybe. character. I mean, um, and then Lyra is the girl from um, that uh, Logan. Logan. She was in. Lo- she was the girl in Logan. Uh, it was Logan's daughter, the one that was like, in 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 this new version. You mean? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah. She. Um, but I didn't. I didn't like the movies. I think a lot of people who like the books didn't like the movies. There's only there was the movie, only one movie. The movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah, it just, I just didn't. I don't really remember know. it that much, but yeah. I remember thinking there's something missing. I think they, 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 maybe they just took too much out. You know, maybe there's just too much for a movie. That's what it is. There's mm. just too much. Well, it was interesting because Sam was like, "How are they going to turn?" one book into a whole series for one thing i'm not sure how they're doing it so if it's just one book per series or if they're going to cover some of the second book in this uh-huh. first season um or if it's all just one, if they're only doing one i actually don't know okay well i i, compl- I completely forgot that this was premiering yeah so. I, I, re- I remember <laughs> when we first saw the news we're like oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> so um, um i haven't watched it because i completely forgot about it because there's like so many yeah. other things to watch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely, definitely watch it. Uh-huh. It's it is good. Oh, and, and then and Manuel think, uh, Miranda is in it too. Who is he? Lee Scoresby. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's definitely bits where I'm like, this happened in the movie or, or in the books. Part of it is I'm not actually sure because it's been a really long time since I read the books. Uh-huh. But then also I think you know they they have adapted it for television, and because you know then it's not just from Lyra's perspective like the book is uh-huh. you see things that maybe she wouldn't have seen or i uh, they might have also just added things in that yeah. make sense for the world uh-huh. um, cause, yeah yeah but, but to but, be honest but, um, I don't remember I think a lot Lin, Lin Manuel is kind of weird pick for Lee Scoresby though isn't he yeah, yes and no, like I think there's this idea of like this you know. I'm sure. I'm sure he's, he does. He's, he's meant to be sort of what, like cowboy. Yeah, sort of yeah. That's figure. why I'm yeah. thinking. So that's why. Yeah. I, um, and, what's his but face as well, like perfect. the <laughs> the Egyptians read like gypsies. Uh, gypsies, but in in this they're like, <sighs> um, they're very diverse. Oh, okay. Like not... you know, there's you know the there's there's black Egyptians, there's white Egyptians. Like oh, okay. so, I I think they they haven't really stuck to the book in that yeah not even stuck to the book or or they haven't been limited to like uh the real world like they they've created an imagined world there's no reason why you know the the (laughs) cowboyish figure can't be lin man yeah yeah like you you know what i mean like yeah um and but yeah so i definitely recommend you watch that uh yeah okay i think i'm gonna watch the first first episode uh tonight yeah. Also, just Pan, Pan when he's his little ferret. Oh, he's just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Pan. Oh, Pan is Lyra's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. it's been a while. I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but but what's his face? I don't know. There's there's a lot of famous people in this. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Um, maybe maybe it's too late now, but for I kind of started 
to say for people who don't know what this is. <laughs> um, and then I didn't really explain, but basically it takes place in like a different version of our world where people have demons and they're essentially their soul, but outside their body. Mm-hmm. And they and it's spelled D-A-E-M-O-N. Yeah, they manifest as a te- like an animal. So, you know, you might have a dog demon or a snake demon or whatever but when you're a kid your demon can like shapeshift and change form and then once you like hit puberty or whatever it settles into its final form and that doesn't change anymore um it's really funny i definitely wasn't the only person to notice but the mrs coulter Mm -hmm. she's got the monkey demon Mm -hmm. right and whatever the species of monkey they used is not one that i've ever seen before it's got like a blue face and because it lives in really, really cold climates, or that's what they think. It doesn't really, its nose doesn't stick out. It's really flat. So is this and a I real think it looks monkey? Quite, yeah, I think it looks quite skeletal because it's almost like the holes for where the nose is instead of an actual nose, uh-huh. like like Voldemort a little bit. No, not quite like Voldemort. Voldemort's more like a snake. But the same day that the first episode premiered, the first episode of, I think it was this first episode, but it was an episode of David Attenborough's Seven Worlds, One Planet uh-huh. nature documentary. And they go to Asia and they talk about this monkey. <laughs> and that, that's why I know about it's, it lives in places that's really cold. And then I saw it again in in uh, his dark materials. I'm like, I've never seen this monkey before. And now twice in one day. <laughs> huh. And it has a blue face. Like a light blue face. It's kind of creepy looking in the in the screenshots. Well, he's, yeah, I think he's it's supposed it's... to be a bad monkey. Well, not a bad monkey. Uh, because Mrs. Coulter. Is... I'm not yeah. going to say anything. Yeah, they... <laughs> <laughs> Someone's scared of spoilers. But yeah, it, it's not. It does look a bit freaky. Um, although. Okay, now you got oh, me all man, excited. Not... I'm going to go watch it. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> right now, right now. <laughs> um, but I think I, I should say, wait, I, I... wait until your dad comes home and watch it with him. I'm, ch- I'm uh-huh. always looking for something to watch with him because, but then he gets, he like loses interest and then I have to, wa- I have to finish it by myself. Uh. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, with that being said. Oh, I have, I have Shop Talk. Shop Talk. Uh-huh. So Shop Talk is about my Etsy store, Pearl and Plum. And I've only recently started, uh, opened the store back up. So it's been a little slow because I've been a little slow about, putting up new bags and stuff since, you know, the whole moving thing. But I did mm-hmm. finish a whole bunch of bags this week, yeah. and I am going to be – I haven't taken pictures yet. So, I, so I'm thinking that by the time this episode goes out, I'll, I'll have – they'll be in the shop. So I have used – I have this sheep fabric that's really mm-hmm. cute, and I know I've made small bags, but I haven't made the bigger bags out of it. So I made a mm-hmm. medium bag out of this wall-to-wall sheep fabric. Wall-to-wall sheep. Uh-huh. Or – Oh, I, I just thought of something. I'm going to call it wool to wool sheep. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Yeah, yeah, so funny. And it's this other sheep fabric that I, I that I bought here in Virginia. And it's I think it's like a nursery print, but it's so cute. It's got blues, yeah, blue and like yellow um, sheep. And I made yeah. uh, sock size bags and medium size bags out of that. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I couldn't resist this cat fabric that I found at the quilt store here. <laughs> that's good. Doesn't really have anything to do with knitting. There is, there aren't even yarn balls because a lot of times you find you find um cat fabric and it's got yarn balls, but this didn't. And uh-huh. it's mostly black and white cats. And I made small ones and medium ones. Oh, nice. And finally, one bag that I've been kind of working on for a long time because there's actually hand knitting in it. Um, hand knitting. Hand knitting in the bag. Look at that. Huh. I knitted little oh, little sheep and I applicate them onto a bag because I could. And it's nice. and it's the back it's the fabric is one of the tartan wools that I got from Scotland. Is it one of the scraps I gave you or something you bought? No, it's it's one of the scraps that you No, cuz I was just thinking it might be Ramsey blue. Looks like it might be Ramsey blue. Okay. But yeah, so it's got very cute. It's got wool and wool. I don't actually I don't know I, I think that it's the 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 sheep are pro- is is probably acrylic. <laughs> so it was just something that I had lying around, so I don't even know what the content is. Uh-huh. But I'm thinking it's probably um, an acrylic. Mm, that's really cute. That's very special. Yeah, it is. And it took me a long time because I was trying to get the sheep right mm-hmm. in the right shape. Yeah. You know. 
so that's that. So those will hopefully all be in the shop while, as you're listening to this episode. And that is that. Okay. Well, I'll do the spiel. Okay. Do the spiel. Okay. Right. So you can find our show notes, which has all photos and everything for this episode and every episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. You can follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is kcacypodcast. Or you can follow my personal Instagram, which is Allison here, and my mom's is upstate underscore viv. Uh, follow us and give us reviews and comments and whatnot on iTunes or on YouTube or wherever else you listen to podcasts. You can also join our Ravelry group. Just search for Keep Calm and Carry Yarn Podcast in the group tab. And you can also buy us a coffee to help support the podcast. Just go to coffee.com slash KCACY podcast. And that's coffee spelled K-O dash F-I. Thanks for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry on. Mm-hmm.